Greetings, Hillbrook Asylum. This is patient 621, I believe is the proper number. I prefer to think of myself as Dr. <coughs> Dr. Wickman, I do hope you are listening. We're both doctors, after all. Men of science in the same field, no less. Yet you have continued to ignore my interview requests, ceased my medical evaluations, and have even cut me off from all civilization. I need my patients, Doctor. They need me, and I need them. Patients such as Zack Schaefer. <laughs> what a poor lost boy. An orderly here at the asylum. Not a particularly interesting case. The poor boy was bit by a red ant at an early age. And a poorly timed comment from his father convinced Zack that his flesh was infested with hungry insects waiting to devour his skin at any moment. Zack came to me in confidence, and we kept our sessions a secret. Despite what the court said, no criminal conspiracy to cause harm was ever committed. I talked to the boy, and he listened. He followed my instructions to the letter. A lifetime of fear brought on by his thoughtless father nearly crippled the boy. But now he walks tall and brave, rising up above the world as though they were, well, aunts. <laughs> Why, the last time I saw Zack, he was positively beaming. Then again, he can do little but smile, can he? What with his skin removed? It was perfectly logical. Any doctor could see that. The ants could not eat his flesh if there was no flesh to eat. Oh, I wish I could have seen him. Taking that sharpened razor in hand, a smooth shave again and again and again. Nothing taken to even dull the pain. Oh, how he must have wanted to scream. The agony he must have endured makes me proud. I've been told his body has contracted quite a few diseases due to the loss of his flesh. He may die, but it's a small price to pay for peace of mind. Uh, perhaps your mind lingers back to Leslie Fine. Yes, yeah, not one of my most prestigious projects, or most successful. Let's see, what was it? Acubutterophobia, I believe. The fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of one's mouth. An odd anxiety, and one Leslie's doctor felt could be ignored. <laughs> I, however, am not one to shy away from adversity. A true Mrs. Fine was not my patient. And I had learned about her existence by previewing Dr. Michael's personal files. But when a woman's life is at risk, one can't let a little thing like a patient confidentiality stand in the way. I came to Leslie's home. I don't see what the problem was. Her husband and children weren't even there. Breaking and entering didn't even occur to me as I burst down the door and sedated Mrs. Fine. I was there in good faith to give her the cure she most desperately needed. Unfortunately, my methods may have been, shall we say, crude. I'm a man of the mind, not the body. 
as I shoved spoonful after spoonful of peanut butter down her throat. I could have sworn we were making progress. How was I to know that Leslie's phobia stemmed from peanut allergies? I read the woman's psych evaluation front to back, and it told nothing of allergies. Clearly a failure on Dr. Michael's part, not mine. Her husband showing up with the children after soccer practice only exacerbated the operation. Luckily, I diffused the situation by knocking him unconscious with a frying pan. All in all, it was an experience. Live and learn. Well, unless you're Leslie. <laughs> My most recent progress was rudely interrupted by one of the Philistines practicing our craft here. Rebecca Cutter. Oh, I'm sure you all know of her. The masochist, they called her. And she has earned the title. They tased her. They beat her. And she smiled through it all. Pain seemed to make her stronger. She relished it. And she returned it in full. It is my professional opinion that Rebecca is simply misunderstood, acting out anger issues long repressed. Dr. Eisner did not share my diagnosis, told me I should spend less time on therapy and more on my medication. <laughs> he believed a full frontal lobotomy would cure Rebecca's beautiful tendencies. Rebecca was my patient. Almost like a daughter to me. You see, I cannot be held responsible for my actions. Dr. Alex Eisner was a loss to me as well as the medical community. But a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Especially when it is carved out like a roasted turkey. Eisner and I talked for hours into the night. I understand no one likes the idea of me wandering the asylum at night. Or wandering anywhere for that matter. But Eisner and I had an operation to attend. I've never been one for surgery. But I gave it my all. Freud would have applauded my efforts. Why couldn't you? Granted, the patient did not survive surgery. And granted, using a shiv and a pair of chopsticks to perform brain surgery is slightly frowned upon, not to mention very unsanitary. The point is, Rebecca is safe now. Ah, a load off of my mind. And Eisner's as well. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose I have talked longer than need be. Our meeting will have to wait, Dr. Wickman. I leave you my recordings, as well as my teachings. Do with them as you will. By the time you've discovered them, I shall be long gone. But rest assured, I shall return. Hillbrook is my home now, as much as it is yours. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have patience to attend to.